Welcome to I Love to Tell the Story, a podcast of the Narrative Lectionary. I'm Katherine Schifferdecker. And I'm Christopher Van Kaufman. And today is the podcast for April 23rd, uh, 2023. Uh, this is the third Sunday of the Easter season, and it's uh, we're moving from the Gospel of Matthew. So last week uh, we finished with the Great Commission at the very, very end of Matthew's Gospel, and now we're moving into some weeks with uh, with the book of Acts. So we're moving, of course, from uh, uh, the, the time of Jesus, his commissioning of the disciples, into the time of the early church, what becomes of this movement, uh, this this Jesus movement. Um, our, our particular text for this Sunday is Acts chapter 10, uh, broken up just a little bit, uh, just because it, it's a long chapter. So we, we're suggesting verses 1 through 17 of Acts 10, and then 34 through 48. You are, of course, welcome to read uh, verses 18 through 33, if you like. Uh, that uh, is completely up to you. Uh, but this is what we're suggesting just for the sake of uh, the length of the reading. And it is, uh, of course, as um, I'm sure you all know, the story of Peter and Cornelius. Um, Cornelius is a, a centurion, uh, a, a Roman um, officer uh, in Caesarea. He's a Gentile. Uh, and Peter is um, told in a vision, uh, well, first, uh, uh, the angel of the Lord appears to Cornelius himself in a vision, uh, and he tells him to send for a certain Simon who is called Peter. Um, and then it's the scene switches to Peter, where Peter uh, has this vision of the um, uh, of the the kind of sheet descending from heaven with all kinds of unclean animals in it, and he's told to uh, get up and take and eat. Um, and then uh, we're, we're skipping a few, uh, several verses here uh, to have Peter come uh, to Cornelius's house and his um, sharing of the gospel with Cornelius and his household. Uh, the story ends with Cornelius and his household being baptized. So a significant story of uh, and, a, and, and appropriate that it comes right after the Great Commission in our narrative lectionary, uh, because here we see that missionary uh, um, commissioning of the church of the disciples being lived out uh, in the the life of the early church and in the life of Peter uh, in particular. Yeah, and as you were describing that, it reminded me of something that you had brought up when we talked about Easter, which is that with the Easter story and then the Great Commission, we see that we're operating on both the cosmic level, that the whole order of the world has changed, but we're also op operating on the personal level that individuals' relationships with Jesus change after the resurrection. And one of the ways that this plays out very strongly in the early church, we see this in Acts, we see this especially in the letters of Paul, is in how one eats with somebody who's different than you. Yeah. Hmm. So this thing, you know, it's this funny thing, right? Christianity and Jesus resurrection, his victory over death, these cosmic forces have a very important <laughs> effect on how you eat your dinner. And this, I think, is a funny <laughs> thing to uh, consider. Uh, but this, both the literal eating of food and then the metaphorical eating of food is what's at heart here in this story about Peter. Because what happens is that we get uh, this very interesting note. Peter is hungry, but mm. while he's waiting for something to be prepared for him to eat, he has this vision. And there's a couple of interesting things going on with this vision. First of all, it is this sheet comes down and, you know, it says all kinds of four-footed creatures and reptiles and birds of the air. That is the things that somebody who follows Jewish dietary restrictions, would not eat. And no less, Peter is commanded to do the killing and the eating himself. And so we've got all sorts of things going on there in terms of uh, kind of the repugnance of this for Peter. And uh, again, this happens, uh, uh, as we say sometimes, Peter is a little bit slow, so it has to be repeated three times. <laughs> but he's left 
puzzled. I think this is a wonderful detail from the story. In Acts 10, 17, Peter was greatly puzzled about what to make of the vision, as it says in the NRSV. But then when we get to the household of Cornelius himself, we start to see what is going on with this vision and the way in which these barriers that separate people groups, and in this case, it is the barrier of uh, dietary restrictions and who can and cannot eat with other people. Remember when we talked about the Last Supper, the way in which food is this place of intimacy, this place mm. where people come together around a table. And so one of the things that needs to be transcended in order for the uh, Great Commission to take place is the question of whether people can eat with each other. And uh, this story speaks so very powerfully to that with Peter's vision of this sheet. Yeah, and it's worth noting, uh, talking a bit about those dietary restrictions. So they're primarily in the book of Leviticus, um, various chapters in Leviticus, but uh, and they're, they're pretty um, strict, I would say, right? I mean, everybody knows that you're not, uh, the Jews, the Israelites are commanded not to eat pork, but it also includes many uh, reptiles and includes um, birds of prey. Uh, it includes uh, certain insects. And there's lots of debate about what this is about. Is it about, you know, um, food poisoning, uh, you know, famously pork is prone to uh, uh, make people sick if it's not prepared correctly. It seems like it's more than that because that doesn't apply to all of the prohibited uh, animals. But it, it is, for what, whatever the reason is, and I think uh, my favorite explanation is by um, a scholar named Samuel Ballantyne who says that um, these these laws are meant to restrain the killer instinct in human beings, right? You you cannot eat everything that moves. Uh, that you know you you only eat these certain animals, um, and, and you only eat them in a certain way. Right, right. You can't eat them with the blood. Uh, yeah, we had talked about that on in the Monday Thursday podcast, but. Um, uh, yeah, and there's a certain kind of even today uh, observant Jews. There's a there's a certain way that you kill the animals in a humane way. Um, so the you know Peter, as you said, being a good Jew, uh, has abided by these laws, and and really in large part, it's these laws that help um, first the Israelites in exile, and then the Jews. It helps them maintain an identity in the diaspora, you know, being a, 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 a strange people in a strange land, um, they, they maintain their identity in large part through the dietary laws, through circumcision, through the observance of Sabbath, and of course, through the, the study of Torah. And so for, for God to say in this vision, um, you know, get up, Peter, kill and eat, um it's 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 surprising it's shocking yeah um, but the, the the key ver the key thing here seems to be in verse 15 what god has made clean you must not call profane mm -hmm. so there's a new development here right that that god has made a new declaration here in a sense yeah, and I think it's important too to think about this in terms of we sometimes overemphasize uh, when talking about uh, ancient Judaism, kind of their particularity or their insularity or something like that, uh, and thinking about the ways in which the people around them were often very suspicious of the emphasis that they put on food laws and used it as a way to marginalize them. And this is something that still continues. Food is yeah. one of those things where we use as an identity marker. Um, one of the things that I talk about is that every, uh, almost every uh, Asian immigrant uh, of about my age has a story of when they were small, when their lunch was made fun of, because food just really uh, sets people apart. 
But the so, and I think that's an interesting point, though, in terms of what you were saying about what God has made clean. It is in some ways the restrictions uh, imposed by the Jewish dietary restriction, but also the way in which the Gentiles have used that to marginalize the Jewish people that Peter is reacting against, mm. that he is the... So that it's not just thought of as a restriction, but as you said, it's a point of pride. It's a point of communal identity. And it is those things which also are at play here that God is saying that those who are outside this community who do not have the blessing of these food laws are the ones who must be included. Mm -hmm. I think that's an important uh, kind of reframing to think about with this story. And let's let's just remind our listeners, though they, I'm sure, need no reminder of that debate in the early church, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Of do Gentile believers have to become Jews, uh, you know, ritually mm -hmm. be circumcised? Circumcision is a big point of contention there, but dietary laws as well. As well. Do they have to become Jews before they can become Christians? That's that's this debate, and we right there's there's this uh, historic uh, kind of council right in Jerusalem to talk about that question. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so this is part of that debate, and and it seems that Peter um, and and Paul, of course, is most often associated with that. Right, he's the apostle to the Gentiles. He's the one who argues for the inclusion of the Gentiles. And in, you know, famously in books like Galatians, argues very vehemently <laughs> against uh, this idea that that Gentiles have to be circumcised in order to become Christians. Uh, but, you know, Peter uh, uh, is part of that. Um, in this story in particular, Peter is part of that um, debate as well. And and uh, as you say, it takes three times, but he finally seems to get the point that what God has made clean, you must not call profane. And this is a a preparation for him to share the gospel with uh, even Cornelius, mm -hmm. this Gentile uh, officer. Yeah, and I think it's important too in this case to, to look at the way that Luke describes him in the book of Acts. He is a centurion from the Italian cohort in Caesarea. And I think it would not be uh, too far of a stretch to have uh, Luke's readers think about other centurions and other Roman soldiers that they've met during in the gospel narrative. But you see that in some ways, the centurions are very positive figures in the gospels in terms of the way that they accept we see, a, especially at the foot of the cross, but there's also the story of the centurion and his servant. So in some ways, there's they've been prepared to think of the centurion in positive terms. But then also, uh, from the perspective of Peter, this is right after the crucifixion. This is mm -hmm. right after the, uh, the execution of Jesus at the hands of the Roman authorities. And so there is a way in which it is not just the dietary prejudice that Peter is overcoming, but also uh, it is the meeting with his persecutor that he mm. has to accomplish mm. in this. And so there's, again, it goes back to that, that like very personal and very small sort of relationship that's going on, but then also this larger relationship and the way in which, as we talked about in the Great Commission, that even the colonialist is included in the Great Commission and uh, even if it, we would like them not to be. <laughs> and that is good news for me, who uh, <laughs> am descended, are descended from uh, German uh, roots. I don't know if any of my ancestors were colonialists, but it <laughs> wouldn't surprise me. But yes, good news. I, I think that's an excellent point, Christopher, right? It's not just about Jew and Gentile. It's also about um, the occupied and the occupier or the, mm -hmm. the, the oppressed and the oppressor here. That the gospel is, yes, for the poor and the downtrodden and the oppressed, and uh, for the oppressor uh, who mm -hmm. will be transformed by it. Exactly. And we see that. That's a great place to end. That's one of the, the marks of this narrative, that 
Cornelius and his household are transformed by the gift of the Holy Spirit and by the baptism that comes at the end here. <laughs>